Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I did that in the wrong order, it's been too long. Uh, this is the Wix Online meeting number 27 on May 22nd. Um, real quick note, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to make the time slot right now. And I'm going to go to the agenda slide before I talk about the agenda. All right, here we are on the agenda slide. Uh, like usual, we'll start with triage. Bob wants to go through and review the open 3.9 issues to make sure we're on track to actually get some of those to go away, or whatever we're going to do with those. We'll talk about Wix 3.9 and Wix 3.10, or rather, Bob will talk about those. Um, and then we'll do questions, comments, or things that people didn't send um, along earlier. Uh, and it's good to be back. Sorry for being sick for six weeks, but it does feel much better to be mostly human. All right, you ready to go do triage, Bob? Sure. Do you want to do it top down or bottom up? We have 22 issues to triage. Yeah, I saw that. It was kind <laughs> yeah, of that was at my request. Yes. Earlier today, it's like, really? Okay, fine. Whatever. I think in the last 24 hours is what that means. Uh, we'll start at the bottom. Okay. Um, because those are 20 days ago, and we'll get our way up to the top. I don't think a lot of these will take too long. No. Um, multimedia elements and file sequences, and I just lost my mouse. All right, so I'm going to do this blind. Um, when using multimedia elements, numbers get all mixed up. That's bad, and I don't know why it would be different in 4.0 versus 3x, but it needs to be fixed. So we should definitely put this in 4.0 as open, because we can't ship with it. Um, and we'll go sort that out. All right. Because unless it's not true, and then I'm going to be like, what? But either way. Change the name of most cancel buttons to close. The following will never make will never make Wix standard ask whether to close, so they should rename from cancel to close. Oh, man. There's, there's like, official... Windows UI guidance about about having certain buttons, you know, the standard buttons. OK should do something in particular. Cancel should do something. Close should do something. I th I think this is right. I think um, there's no cancel would be something that would throw away what you've done. So therefore, you know. These things can't be undone, so therefore they should get a close, not a cancel. I think that's how the UI guidelines work. I liked it easier when it was all just consistent, but whatever. Um, okay, I guess. Um, it's not assigned to anyone right now, so I don't know. Well. I mean, we can put it in 4x, but if... Well, it, it is currently marked in 4.0. Yeah, I, I know. Agree. It's a, you know, breaking change, kind of. Yeah, I mean, if, especially for loc and all that kind of stuff, if people have done that or whatever. Yeah. Um, modify, cancel. Jacob brings up that you're, mod you're canceling the modification. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, I, I, all these are going to be like, you can be fiddly over them. Um, yeah, but nothing's been done. I mod that one is, I think, the maintenance mode welcome equivalent. Yeah. So we haven't done anything yet. You've opened the window and you could close it. Or you could say, I'm modifying, and I'm choosing not to modify, so I'm going to cancel <laughs> before having done the modification, which means I would have... I, I don't care. Um, I think I of it this way. If, if, you, if you hit the, you know, the big red button... Um, that's equivalent to a close, not a cancel. But it's not, because it's equivalent to a cancel when you're in the progress page. Anyway, I, I don't want to spend that much. Uh, well, <laughs> that's well the, the progress. Well, no, the progress page isn't listed here, so you know that's a cancel. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Pushing the big red button is not the same as close. No, I'm saying if if pushing the big red button is the same if if Pushing the big red button uh, is the equivalent. Uh, <laughs> I was going for no, no. I if, if so, I think this is what uh, ask whether to close. So that's kind of the if you 
if you push the big red button and it just goes away because there's no reason to prompt, then that page should have a close button, not a cancel button. Fine. Cancel is something you probably want to prompt for. Fair enough. Especially, say, if it All would right. trigger a rollback. So we'll put it in 4.0 for a little while, and it will get bumped to 4x if nobody picks it up in 4.0. Okay. I'll just do that. Improve progress when extracting a container. Don't we already have a bug open on this? Because I remember there was a comment. Um, there's a comment, yeah, about progress not working correctly when extracting. So, oh, goes to 100%. It's extracted. Oh, that's it. yeah. Okay, so progress is really kind of busted. <sighs> yeah, we should fix this. It's a pain in the butt. The progress in there is kind of a pain in the butt. But yeah. Yes, it's a bug. I don't know if it's a feature. Uh, yeah, whichever you want to look at it. Um, so I think this pull request got pulled last night. I think I did this one. Yes. Um, all right, so Sean confirmed. I, I want to talk about the use of number of phases, but we can talk about that later. So <clears throat> this is good. Maybe we'll tweak it a little bit before it goes out widely to the world. Should this be closed? Y yes, but it's assigned to Sean, and he apparently knows the pull request is done. So okay. To be Sean, fair, the, you can close it. Uh, to be fair, the pull request was, you know, done. Midnight my time last night. So. Unprotected multi-threaded access to variable. Oh yes, I suppose we could have done something like that since the whole <sighs> threaded cache thing came later. Yep. So we should do a better job of handling progress updates here. So yes, I agree that that, that is a bug. Okay. Win Win seven sixty four bit now if installed, not working. Yeah, uh, I'm. Well, you can go ahead and read the many so threads. Install. <clears throat> it failed to launch the elevated process. Whoa, what's going on here? Wait, hey, huh? it's. It, the the root cause is using .NET 452 on Windows 7 RTM. Um, system requirements say that SP1 is required, but 452 does not block. So. Okay, but why is burn failing to elevate? Well, yeah. I, I, hard for me to say because this is all going to be with a managed bootstrapper. Um, but clearly, you know, you're you're in a bad state. It goes away if you install an SP1. Oh, this is the Wix install itself. Wait, no. Oh, runs as. Yeah, I got install. got the same issue. That on wait, so they successfully installed four five two on Win seven x sixty four even though it's not supported. Correct. Wow. Yeah, like I said, there should have been a block there, and I reported to the guilty parties. Wow. And we get this, <clears throat> but why are we getting? Why did we fail to launch the elevated process? Actually, I'm kind of curious whether there's – it's like UAC completely busted at that point. I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it, um, but I know it goes away if you, you know, do the right thing. Is this really possible – simply installing 452 breaks – Elevation? 
that would be bad. I don't know what to do with this bug. I mean, like, for all the people that install 452 on Win 7 RTM, I don't know how many that will be, but if they do that, then burn doesn't work. I'm really surprised that 452 can break burn this way. That's what's really confused me. Yeah. Because yeah, we're, not, we're not calling managed code at this point. There's no managed code involved, I don't think. I mean, I don't think at this level. I mean, this well, is just... I mean, managed code is, you know, it's in the stack, right, if you're running a managed BA. I guess. So, but... Yeah. And they could... I, well, well, Mess up our call to shell execute to do a run as? That's kind of scary. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this bug. Sean, you you were running it. Did was UAC in general broken? Did you notice any other problems? I, I yeah I, I mean I agree with you, Rob. I don't see how, you know. And you got a UAC prompt when you did the run as admin. Interesting. Um, I, the, the errors from the, the log excerpt at the top of the bug, um, it's exactly the same as if you Canceled. You know, declined the UAC prompt. That's right. It's exactly the same. Um, Sean, do you have time, since you have a machine that has this, I don't have a Win7 clean box around easily, um, could you try this with the test BA instead of the Wix BA? And then see if we get the same thing in the test BA built against 452, I guess you have to just have, no, it doesn't have to be built against 452. So whatever test BA on one machine, bring it over to a machine that has Win 7, 64 bit with 452 and try that. Uh, couldn't get his thing to work either. So it's like if you bring the 452 net effects into your process, then you blow up like this. Oh, that's interesting. Which means if that happens, if we wanted to, we could put a, something in the MBA host that basically goes, well, we're in 4, I don't know how to tell if it's in 4.5.2, if you can tell that when you're in the CLR, because they've not been really great at those dot releases, being able to figure out which one you're running in. But if we could figure out we're in 4.5.2 and running on Win7 non-SP1, we could at least get a better error message in the log file and go, uh, this is not supported. It's not going to work, basically. I don't know how much we should do for this. The problem is that this right here is a really nasty log file to debug. Like, um, well. If I got this, I would tell the customer, well, did you hit cancel? Right, right, right. And they'd be like, no. And I'd be like, well, the log file says you did. <laughs> and they'd be like, yes. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it would take forever to get to a point where you went, oh, do you happen to have NetFX 452 on your Win7, you know, RTM machine? Oh, well, I happen to. Oh, well, then that's the No way. Actually, at least you get the Windows version from the log. Yeah, you don't get the CLR. But yeah, not some, not so much for the uh, CLR version. Um, Heath, the problem is I don't know that. I and mean, what do we want to do? Detect just 452 or 452 and later? Do we know if they're going to fix it? Sean, I don't 
Sean, it, it's always possible that Shell Util has a, a bug in it that's not reporting the last error correctly, I suppose. So, I mean, if that's true, then it's not good. But that would just be a thing we should fix. Um, reflection on Fusion. <laughs> if only <laughs> Fusion's all native. Um, all right, what do we do with this bug? Um, it's not going to get fixed in 3.8. Um, what? Yeah, he's if. And I so. Sent the bug in, but I haven't heard anything yet. It seems uh, like the MBA host should do something here. Yeah, I guess it's worth figuring out if... Um, I mean, because it already is doing a little bit of code to figure out what CLR you're on, so doing a little bit extra to figure out that you're on CLR 452 and Win 7 RTM, it could just error out really quickly and go, you've hit this KB article, <laughs> you know, go here. Kind of yeah. Thing. Well, yeah, <laughs> if we add one. Well, um, I... I, I I think Microsoft's probably going to have to write one because this is going to start messing up a lot of people, unless we're special, but I just can't see that we're special. Yeah, sorry. I guess that's that's where I was going. I, I would like to find out if this is like a general problem that affects more than just burn. If it's just burn or, it, you know, MBAs, then, okay, that's weird, but, you know, then, yeah, it's up to us exclusively to, you know, fix or at least note um and you can work around the problem by elevating up front, which right. kind of sort of makes sense, right? Because all the stuff will get started before the CLR gets loaded in your process, and then you get loaded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it must be the fact that the CLR gets loaded into your process on this unsupported operating system that it starts affecting things that we're calling into. Because, I mean, the error code is really goofy, the whole uh, proc not found. It's like, uh, what? Oh, right, right, right. Unless that's the wrong error code that we're getting because we screwed up something. But I don't know. Um, well, uh, you know, clearly... Well, and, and, you know, it's shell execute. And shell execute calls into ginormous parts of the operating system yeah. to do things. So it's possible we end up with something four or five. They need to go, oh, gosh. It's not supported. We need to not run. Yeah. I think that's the only thing we can do. Okay. I, I mean. I, yeah. Well, okay, uh, fine. Maybe, yeah, we say if you're on Win 7 RTM. Right. And it's, you know, greater than 451, then it's probably, you know, busted or going to be busted. Yes, Jacob. The, the what's not supported is that the .NET Framework team allowed 452 to install on RTM Windows 7 even though their documentation that Bob provided a link to says they don't support Win7 RTM, which means the .NET framework is being installed in places it should not be allowed, according to the documentation. Which means this is a .NET framework bug that we're going to be seeing in really strange ways. I believe that actually Win7 RTM is no longer supported period there, wow. I think we're out of the, the SP1 window I, well that's great except we're still dealing with text I know so. I know I don't I know I just the, that it, that part, that aspect is yeah the, the service pack level thing how Microsoft handles life, um, life cycles they, they still should block Oh, absolutely. No, I, I, so that they, we don't create this problem for us. All right, I think the yes. fix here is I think we should do this. Because, like, I mean, we're going to get this in Wix, right? Someone installs, you know, 452. Some dev installs 452 on the machine and then starts complaining that Wix doesn't install. Yeah. And we're all going to have to sit around remembering, oh, 
what was that bug again? <laughs> Personally, I'm, I don't think we're going to get a lot of hits, but yeah, I think we should probably detect it. Yeah, and, and the host already is doing some of this, so I think that's probably the fix. And I guess we put it in 3x until someone's willing to do that. Well, it'd be nice to get in 3.9. I just don't have cycles right now to do something this complex. The test case, mostly. Uh, anybody in the, the gallery want to sign up to fix this in 3.9 in the next few weeks kind of thing, couple weeks? All right, Sean, all right, how about, Sean says he's willing to try, so how about we drop it in 3.9, give it to him, and see how it goes. Okay. Worst comes to worst, Sean is unable to make it, and it gets bumped to 3x again, or 310, or whatever we want to do there. Uh, what did we say we want the solution to be? Is this early fail? Yeah, I think... Good call, Heath. I think let's get the code such that we detect the condition and then we'll, we'll have a debate about what the message or whatever should be. Okay. Yeah, it, it, and I know we're in unsupported territory and therefore we should probably, you know, do as little as possible, but since the it works well enough to bring up the BA, it might be nice to throw that as um, – you know, an error callback so that the BA could provide a nice message rather than just do nothing and then put it in the log. Well, yeah, it might be a hard-coded error message from, like, a message box. I'm not sure we want to get the BA too deeply involved. I mean, most BAs won't write it, things like that is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. It's basically an a user got into an edge case. We need to just kind of point into it. So... And we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the design for the error messages later. I agree. It probably needs to be something more than um, something more than just the log message, because people will be like, "What the hell didn't happen?" Yeah, right. I'll I'll double click harder. Yes. Right. <laughs> Try creating an installer based on Wix UI Mondo. It's pretty simple. I've added UI. Yes, works great until I try to create one with. FIFL or FIFI hard tell. After that, I'm getting an exception. Well, that's kind of weird. This works fine in 3.8 RTM and in 3.9. Oh, so that's just my question. I don't, I don't know if I, right. I can't repro it. So you and you can't repro it in three. Correct. All right, let's add that to the bug. Oh, and it's in 4x. Probably should put it in 4.0. Stuff that works in three. That doesn't work in four. We probably should put in four zero, even there's no owner of it, just so that we know it's a breaking change. Otherwise, it could hang hide in four x, and we'd end up shipping a breaking change that we actually knew about. And yada yada yada. Okay. Burn engine leaks memory. Cache creates strings. It doesn't release. Really, well, that's pretty lame. Um, yes. I'll take this one. Okay. Oh, you opened it. You might know something about what that's all about. Perhaps. File should take precedence for determining default key path. Oh, we had this debate a long time ago. Yeah, we did. Um, I was answering a question. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember this debate well. Uh, I was answering a question about um, star goods. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the question came up about whether you should uh, tag the file with keypath equals yes. And I remember this discussion because I remember, God, this is stupid. Just drop it, drop it, make it, you know, make the default stuff work really well. Um, but then the problem is you start adding registry values to the same component. So... Heath, I thought we already did that. 
Although, empty components are... No, we don't automatically create create folder for empty components. Um, Why do we? When do we do it? Maybe remove folder. I think create folder is trickier. Um, create folder is with um, maybe the folder. component keypad. Right. Yeah. Anyway, that's not this issue. Um, no, I not. thought I thought that this was okay because if you put a reg key above the file, the with star good that the star good would complain that you've made a key a registry of the key path instead of the file and it won't let you do that. Let's yeah. come back to this bug. <laughs> I, 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 I think I thought about the case you're talking about and I think it's okay. Let, you you go on. All right. <laughs> I may have just saved us. Patch applicability yeah, performance Optimization. Optimize patch applicability for already installed things. Okay, yeah. Could see that. I don't know what all of these numbers are, but whatever. They're from Heath, so we could do that. Bundles should wait until asynchronous child bundles are registered. So I, I read this thing on MS you know, on some blog, MSDM blog. There's no such thing as an asynchronous child bundle. So I was like, what the uh -huh. hell is this? <laughs> it's like we're making up features that don't exist and burn. Except maybe kind of sort of some do. Actually, there's another, yeah, there's an issue higher up. Uh, about doing asynchronous bundles? Yes. Yeah, okay. I guess I don't, then these are in the wrong order, but okay, whatever. <laughs> the bugs in reverse order. That's really weird. <laughs> Problem occurs if the reboot is initiated before the asynchronous bundle has written its registration. I don't understand why this is a bug if we don't have a feature. Assume you have the feature. That's a bug. <laughs> What, are we going to get a feature that has a bug in it by design that we're not going to get the fix for from? Um, by the way, these are currently marked as 3.9. That last one was marked as 3.9. I don't know that we'd take that 3.9. I, I didn't even look at that originally. I guess it would if it'll come in. I, well, we, we would take this in 3.9 if it came in time. Yes? No? Yes. All right, cool. Yeah, I agree. That, I do consider that. I don't know why this is a bug. This is a bug about a feature we don't have. What the hell? I I, I would tend to agree that this is dumb. When he was bringing in the feature, you wouldn't bring in the bug. No. I I I I, I think that bug should just go away. That's just weird. And fine, yes, we should not have a feature that we don't have yet with a bug in it. And it's so weird even saying that. <laughs> Ref count superseded products where the provider key already exists. Obsolete and superseded packages the same such that products that are already registered in the dependency tracking system are properly ref counted. Derek. All right. Treats obsolete, obsolete, and a superseded packages the same, such that products that are already registered in the ministry are properly ref counted. I don't know what same means, but okay. Obsolete. All right. Yeah, it, I could see there being. I could see how that kind of get there. Yeah, fine. Failure to find product from upgrade code should not report error. When using upgrade code, failure to find a related product reports an error in the log. Yeah, I don't think this is a problem. <laughs> so Microsoft has gone off and implemented their features different wrong, and then they report bugs on stuff that we don't have. All right, well, technically, they did it first. Wait, 
Actually, I don't know if that's true. Uh, whatever. I, I don't want bugs from Microsoft forks of code <laughs> that aren't real bugs. So, um, all right. Then if this is true, then I guess we could take that. What do we do with a whole bunch of searches? So what does that mean? If it fails to find a related product, yeah, it shouldn't error. It just shouldn't find anything. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I'm what I'm saying is the code that we have, does not do this. Yeah, okay, good. That makes sense to me. Because there, there's no shared implementation for these two things. We knew, yeah. we, I mean, we knew back in 3.6 that this was a good idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know. All right, cool. So this is not a bug. We do not write error messages in log when doing product search slash upgrade. I didn't do any of this. Okay, so if it does, then um, we should fix that. Heath, I I disagree, Heath. We had we had this in in three eight. <sighs> Unless you overwrote what someone did, and I don't think that's the case. Uh, right, we can leave so this bug open to go verify that this is correct. Bob, can yeah. you go verify it, or Heath, I don't care. One of you guys verify it. All right, cool, yeah. great. So I'm gonna go verify it and figure out if we actually still have a logging problem. But okay. I agree with the I agree with the sentiment of the bug. Yes. Not finding products. It's not even failure to find products. Not finding products is not an error message, right? Support for user custom actions to be independently non-vital. Failure to add a user to a group could be considered non-vital for some accounts, but the CA is Ah, oh, that's probably and we probably could take that in 3x, right? Cuz it's not breaking its additive. As long as I the agree. default is vital, which I think is kind of what we do. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Prevent embedded bundles from starting simultaneously after restart. Whoa, if a nested bundle initiates a restart, oh gosh, yes. This is, nested bundles are really kind of annoying. Yeah, we have kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, I agree. That's probably what the nested bundle is going to have to know that it's nested, not restart, but then it's going to have, how's it going to get finished? How does the nested bundle, the parent bundle has to kick it off even though it's already been installed, so it has to remember that it's restarted? Or, uh, all right. Oh, I agree with the bug. Well, we should talk about the design because that sounds interesting. Oh, the negative exit code thing. We had a big thing about this a while ago, about the exit codes and negative numbers and all that kind of stuff overflowing and such. Yes. And it was almost like we should turn this into a keyword so that we'd know we have enough bits. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, we have another bug on this, right? So I, I, I agree with the this bug and the other bug. We need to get that right. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm sure there's another bug there. All right, so let's put these together because I... I, I, yes, we need to fix this because this has happened somewhere else too. I, I, again, I agree sizes. With, again, I agree with the, there's already a bug open for this. We have a bug about this. Thank you, Sean. You may have found the other bug. Uh, it, this is a dupe of another bug. So we can dupe that. Sorry, Bob, I'm going fast. Is that all right? 4427 is a dupe of another bug? Yeah, I'll catch up. Add detection for Visual Studio 14. That which does not exist. That'd be cool. Yes, we should add detection for it before it exists. Anyway, I'm, I'm all for it. If you know what the answer is, yeah, bring it. That would be awesome. Yeah, I didn't even know there's. Is there a beta for 14? Not yet. Okay, well, I mean... Not that it necessarily exists, I can't say. <laughs> uh, 
I assume they're still working on it. Oh, a limited CTP. Okay, fine. I'm I'm fine. Bring it. It's great. I, we all know there will be one. It will probably be very much like the ones before it. We probably could just guess it. We probably could put Dev15 in there right now and guess pretty well. Um, fix responsive problems when canceling a bits download. Yeah, I remember something like this weirdness. Bits is so goofy in this way. This is why you shouldn't use bits. and Just use the HP downloader and Wix. It works better. But yes, periodically check if the for cancel if the bits job isn't transferring. Yes, Jacob, it is a two week timeout. It's awesome. <laughs> Again, this is why bits is lame and you should just use a downloader in Wix because it's much better. I remember getting huge pushback on that and then I just point people at all the numbers and they're like, Wow, it's faster, it does resume, it does everything. I'm like, Yes. Well, we're still gonna use bits because we should. I'm like, you have fun with that. For annuals, uh, no, for an uninstall, do not repair dependent bundles if no packages are being executed. Ugh. Repair a bundle if no packages were executed. So if you uninstall a bundle that has been superseded completely, don't do the repair. I could see this happening in an upgrade or something pretty right. easily. Yeah, that makes, that's interesting. This is why nested bundles are such a pain. This is why MSI cut nested bundles. Haha, <laughs> I guessed the use case before I knew what it was. Fix object schema to allow for unbounded columns. What? Chain tables required more than the maximum allowed columns, but since these are unreal tables, the limits are not needed. Pose for real tables. I see. So there's something that we check for the real maximum of an MSI column, and we're applying that for unreals. I wonder if we should just do this for all Unreal tables. Oh, maybe that's what this is saying. <sighs> yeah. Thirty-third column. Oh, a thirty-third column. It's the column count. Oh, unbounded columns. Oh, jeez. Seriously? Seriously? Some of the package. Some of the package tables. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And, and it doesn't matter in the end, so it's fine. Add support for burn only caching packages. This should work. I don't know why this doesn't work. The exe what the exe package allows for asynchronous commit. No, it doesn't. What the hell? All right, so you should be able to do caching all. No, not layout caching. You should be able to pass burn action cache to plan and it should basically say cool I will plan all of your packages to be cached that's supposed that to work top level action yeah isn't it uh, oh maybe it's not yeah there's a bug Sean maybe Sean it doesn't work okay so oh. it's possible it doesn't work <laughs> it's possible there's a bug in it but it's there it, I, but it's apparently never been tested deeply so it's like <laughs> or nobody used the feature, but anyway, it's supposed to work. So there's no ad support for this. This already is there. Um, and so we should just, we should fix it. <laughs> All right, well, it's supposed to be there. I still don't know what this XE package allows asynchronous command execution thing. There's still nothing about this this feature that isn't anywhere. Okay. Well, we're at the end of the list. So I got two bugs <laughs> about things that don't exist. All right. So I am... Sean, is that other bug still open for the caching packages thing? Yes, in 4.0. Fine. Um... Well, let's dupe this bug 4432 against that bug. And Heath, let's talk about how you're doing supporting caching but packages in a way that doesn't break backwards compatibility. Because um, we had a discussion about this in 4, and it, I do remember it breaking backwards compatibility. So that's fine. Let's go get that 
go grab that other bug in 4.0 and bring it back, but we'll dupe this one to that. Cool, Bob? Maybe Sean knows the number off the top of his head. All right, cool. 4393, there we go. That's the dupe of that one. Sweet. All right, so Bob, you want to talk about 3.9 open now? Sorry, I'm still, you you went 180 miles an hour. I did, because I want to get to these features, because... I understand. Um, I, I, I'm not sure 4393 is the... is the... Oh. is the same. It's close, it's related, but... He, um, the reason it's related, I thought that was the support caching... 4432 adds a, a top-level action to support a cache-only action. And, and I'm fine if, if that's the solution to 4393. Or, I mean, if that's the solution to 4393, then that's fine. I, I, what I'm saying is that this should work. Sorry. There is a design and burn for this to work. If it doesn't work, we should fix it. 4393 was our first bug that we had that talked about that, I thought. Um, now you guys are going to make me go. Linux toolset issues four. Yeah, four three nine three is is specifically about the you know request state and action state. I see. Which is like you know it's an implementation aspect to adding it as a top level action. All right, so we I'm should going. relate these two bugs and try to figure out the correct way to fix them both. Right. Heath, or, I think. It, it, it looks like the asynchronous aspect is, you know, a, a bullet in this bug, and it probably should be separate. And it's, well, it has nothing to do with this bug. Well, sure it does. No, it, it, sorry. It doesn't because I assume that this already works. And it doesn't, I mean, I, I appreciate there's a bug that, for caching only packages, the fact that this is a bug is true. It should have worked. The fact that it didn't was a bug doesn't have anything to do with asynchronous XXE packages or any of that other crap. Now, if you need this to be fixed for those other features that I yes, don't, or that, don't know what the hell we're doing there, then fine. But And, and yes, he, that's that's all I was saying. Is they're related because it's the same yeah, feature, essentially. Well, no, because this is supposed to work independent of asynchronous XXEs. That's my sure. point. I'm not disagreeing with that. All right. I'm still frustrated that this bug didn't, or that this didn't work off the top, so that's all. It'll be good to finally get it fixed appropriately. And let's tie 4432 to at least mention 4393 so it takes into account, at least thinks I'm, about the issue of that other bug. I'm not aware of any other way of tying them together except to mention it. Yes, that's fine. We'll do that. All right. Do we give you enough time to catch up then? Yes, I'm good. All right. Let's see if I click the right button because I can't see my mouse cursor. No, I did not click the right button. Oh, yes, maybe I did. Oh, we now have more things because we took all those bugs. Right. <clears throat> and they're all assigned to Heath. All right. I'm okay with that. All right, dude. What do you want? Uh, so my goal here was just to go over them. Yeah, lots of stuff hasn't been touched in, you know, uh, six months, five months, three months. Um, if people are still working on them and there's still some interest, let's do it. Um, if not, then, you know, let's decide what we're going to do with the bug. Either reassign or, you know, put back in the 3x bucket. Well. Fortunately for the people that have been active, we've been seeing changes on these things, except my bugs, which being sick hurt me, so I'm going to get back to my bugs. But, like, you know, Heath's here talking about his bugs. Sean has been sending fixes for his. Jacob's been sending stuff for his. The K News, I expect, is just going to get punted because he's not come back, as far as I know. Right. And, and that's, Blair's that's been, the kind of thing I want to I want to look at. Yeah, and Blair's been MIA for quite a while, so those bugs might, might not come in. Yep. Uh, 
John Cooper waiting for a leak. But John, you don't have any bugs assigned to you in 3.9, do you? I don't think you do. So that's what we're mainly worried. Oh, but you do have ah. Uh, you have code for what? All right, so John, right now this is what we're taking in 3.9. You don't want to add something to 3.9 later because it's just not going to happen. So if you think it's going to go in 3.9, you should get the feature or the bug or whatever in 3.9 with your name on it open and on our radar so that if the code comes in in time, it's in. But if you show up with code and a bug late, we'll be like, tough, you're in the next bucket. So get your bug part of triage and all that kind of stuff. Unless you already have and then that warning goes to other people. All right. Lawyers do that. <sighs> okay. Just so you know, having a feature show up late is a good way to end up not in the current release. Like, like Heath is on the edge of showing up in the next release, I think. So, anyway. Um, yes, we should go through these, but not right now. Well, did you already do the 451 support, Bob? Or is there just something else to do there? No, no. Well, that, that's... 451 support probably won't happen. Probably this will change. Hopefully this will change into 452 support, which um, I should actually just rename this thing. Okay. Um, anyway, all right, cool. I didn't want to go deep into it. But, all right, so, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here, and they're all signed to people. That's good. Cannot be present. Move MS build test from .NET 4 to .NET 2. From .NET 2 to .NET 4. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of at the point where I, I well, we're gonna have to do it this week, right. um, but soon, you know, I, I wanna, I wanna clean up what's marked for 3.9. Yes. All right. I need to go through so, and do my books. I will. I'll actually go ahead and and uh, ping people with open bugs that we oh, have. Oh wait, seen there's another now. page. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, haven't had an old, a second page in quite a while. Oh, oh yeah. yes, right, that one. Yes, I remember that bug. So that's fine. Mine are a lot of error message type things, which won't be taking yeah. very long to do at all. All right, cool. Going back? Sure. All right, cool. So we're now done with triage and 3.9 review. That was fast. Bob. Uh, all right, so we have 11 whole minutes. Um we talked about this on, on Wix devs, which is great. Um, the basic idea that, that we've been batting around is to stop adding stuff, which is to say that we want to start moving more features into V4 rather than keep adding stuff into, into the 3.x releases. The, the goal basically is to make, you know, to kind of to start ramping down on what we do in in Wix 3.x, um, and to start ramping up on what we do in version four. Uh, so specifically, what we talked about here is shutting down 3.9 soon, and I'll talk dates when we get to the next bullet, um, and then ramping up just a little bit on on v310 but scaling back so for example in 39 we've taken a, a good number of features from people love that love to see the code coming in um, but we haven't done a lot of bug fixing so that's okay um, there's some bugs getting fixed and um, actually a good number of bugs getting fixed now that I think about it um, but what we're talking about for for 310 which we've already talked about as being kind of the, the Visual Studio, uh, well, whatever name they give it, the next version of Visual Studio, the next version of Windows, um, whatever we have to do to support those two platforms, that's part of 3.10. Um, but then we've talked about scaling back on the kinds of features that we take. Um, for those who, who watch uh, the Wix devs mailing list, you, you'll know that we ran into a bunch of issues with backward compatibility, which is a key part of the promise of, of the 3.x series that we don't want to break. Um, 
So one easy solution is just to say, yeah, if it's not backward compatible, it just it, it won't go into 3.x, 3.10 or 3.11 if we have one. Um, bug fixes are always welcome, um, but features are things we should start focusing on moving into, into version 4 instead. Um, that's the idea. Uh, yeah, there, there's room for disagreement. I think if if 3.10 is you know something that doesn't ship until 2015, um, then yeah, yeah, probably we'll get some features in there. And if they're small, they're backward compatible, they're easy. Yeah, I, I'd be okay with that. Uh, but you know, bigger stuff. Yeah, we should probably think about moving those into version four only. Um, one option is to do feature work in version four and try to merge it back. If it's hard to merge back, it's probably because it's not going to be backward compatible. And there's your, your trigger to say, okay, let's just leave it only in version four. Um, I haven't tried to do cross repo merging, but probably doable. Uh, I do it good. all the time. In fact, I did it okay, last there you night, go. and it is getting oh, yeah. increasingly more difficult to do. And I'm actually about prepared to go one step further and say feature work should be done. You know, anything that's not a targeted fix for 3x feature work should be done in four, um, and then you can rewrite the feature back in 3x if accepted. So it's like do the work in four and then figure out how to write it in 3x separately. Um, not now, but going forward, I think that we're, we should look at that kind of approach. Yeah, I, th I think that's reasonable. And, um, uh, you know, again, it's like if, if something is hard to merge or even to rewrite, it's just it's a sign that yeah it's it's probably not appropriate going forward in um, in the 3.x series. Yeah, uh, so far we've been getting lucky because a lot of the feature work has been in burn, and there's not been a lot of change in burn in four yet. Yet, but I think that will change when we want to start making breaking changes like cleaning up burn, which has not been done yet. It'll make right. it much harder to do the work. To support those changes over. Yes, I yep. agree with that. Uh, so that's that's the way we're leaning. Um, uh, Sean, I, I believe you came up with the suggestion in the first place, so I'm assuming you're you're in agreement. Um, Heath, uh, your the tests. Yeah, yeah. I would like to look at the tests. I, I have no problem taking test changes. Yeah, we should be able to take test changes any time, right? Like, I mean, yeah. the worst they, that happens never, is the test is broken and doesn't affect RTM. They're never going to break the, the product, so that's fine. Um, I'm, I'd, I'd be interested to take a look at the tests in, in 4 and to see how much of those we can reuse. At a you know, higher tool level, I'm guessing they'd be okay. I, but I'm speaking of complete ignorance because I haven't looked at uh, the V4 tests as much. There's not a lot, and most of them are on unit testing around the new stuff, which doesn't exist in 3x. Okay, okay. Like uh, inline directory syntax. Got it. Okay. I thought there was more than that. Okay. So yeah, Heath tests good. Tests always good. Um, it, it, and I agree. It, as we go. Um, as as we get further into releases that we're saying are strictly for bug fixing, tests, extra tests, lots of tests would be really good. We've kind of ignored it a bit too much. I've done much better than four. Very good for you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so as far as dates go, um, well, the original plan that I threw out there uh, on Wix devs pretty much via a dartboard would be 
to ship 3.9 this summer. I was originally thinking July. Well, I was originally thinking July 4th because we did that for, what was it, 3.5? Yes. 3.5 shipped on July 4th. So we have, you know, our holiday themes. Um, but, you know, that's just a silly thing. So, um, but based on July 4th, I said that actually this week would be our cutoff for taking any new features. Um, and then Rob got, you know, the plague or something, and we were kind of uh, cut off from, Slow down. <laughs> from from this this kind of communication, which I think is, you know, it's important, even with just a handful of us, it's important to talk. Um, you know, we can get a little bit more bandwidth than email. Um so I'm I'm fine with saying okay we missed a couple of weeks so we can push out a couple of weeks, um, you know, say you know, uh, June sixth Friday June sixth, that's your last chance to get in any new feature work. It's not your last chance to get a surprise feature in. Um, you know I want to say if if a feature hasn't been through triage and approved by next Thursday, and it's not going to make it. Um, that'll give you one extra week to put things together. But the code's got to be there. Pull requests. Yeah. Pull, I want to say clean pull requests. Again, it's, you know, it's not, I, I want to, I, like, I'm, I'm a TA grading papers. Um, yeah, we have to have some good code. Um and then we do our traditional Wix thing of, you know, giving it like a month or so to, to bake. We'll still occasionally take bug fixes, but again, as before, we'll kind of ramp down on what kinds of fixes we'll take. Um, yeah, just kind of looking at the, the bugs that have come in over the past couple of months, I'm not really worried. Uh, yeah, there haven't been a lot of changes in the core tool set. Things are stable. There have been a lot of changes in burn, though. There have been a lot of changes in burn, and that's why I still want a nice bake period. Um, but I think, you know, four to six weeks, somewhere around there, yeah, we can probably do that. If, if we can get out a release candidate, um, you know, the second or third week of June, give people a month to play with that, I think we're, we're in good shape. Uh, to release sometime in July. If we slip into August, well, I'll lose out on my Wix bonus, I guess. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? You ship on a schedule, you get a nice bonus? Something like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll ship you a gold star. Thank you. Um, so that's the thinking. Um, 310 uh, is because it's driven by Visual Studio and Windows. Um, well, I, if you've read my blog, I kind of whined about the fact that the build conference didn't talk about any dates, so we just have rumors to go on. Rumors are saying, you know, next spring. Um, so we have, you know, about a year. Depending on what, you know, Microsoft does in Visual Studio and Windows in that year. Um, my guess is, we're, you know, we actually have a good chunk of time to to work on the Visual Studio integration, and Eric left, so we won't get to hear how he's doing on that. Um, and we get to see what if what if anything Microsoft's going to do for desktop developers in the next version of Windows. Um, so plenty of time if we wanted to start fixing bugs that do touch the core toolset more, because we have plenty of time to bake everything in. That's the plan. That's the proposal. Um, I think it's a pretty good one. I think it, it starts to address the problems we're going to have. Not problems, but, you know. Challenges. Well, no, not even challenges. It's it, it, Well, you know, it's one of those good problems to have, right? As Wix 4 starts to, you know, head toward a release, there's going to be, there is a natural, you know, it's like, oh, the new shiny stuff is coming. And Wix4 adds a lot of nice shiny stuff 
like the form of, in the form of you know the inline directory syntax. Um, so you know I think people who are interested in Wix, interested in contributing to Wix, will all feel kind of the pull to go work on on the new shiny stuff with the cool new features. Um, and I think if we you know we keep Wix 3x going uh, to you know to serve users who are who are you know needing support for Visual Studio 14 whatever it's called uh, and the new version of Windows this is this is all good um, but there'll start to be that tension where more people want to work in in version four so uh, like I think that's a good problem to have and. Uh, starting to ramp down 3x is a good way to address that. Uh, I'm willing to hear support for or complaints against. Um, you know, the, look, looking at the contributions, I'm I'm just the paper pusher for this stuff. You guys are are the ones doing most of the work, um, code-wise anyway, because there's a lot of paper involved. So, yeah, my job's important, but. Um, you guys are doing most of the most of the code lifting, so would love to hear any feedback that you guys have. Or not. Oh, there we go. Hey. Yeah, actually we should we do going through the three nine bugs, we could uh, ping Jacob on his bundle stuff. And there we go. Um, do you see any problems, Jacob, with um, early June? Oh, right. Okay, yeah, temp file. Yeah, that's right. Sean did, yeah. <laughs> extra extra code review is good. More eyes, shallow bugs, etc. Okay, I'll I'll take a look. Rob, are you done with pull requests for the? Um, for pull requests, well, there's Jacobs, which he's talking about. Um, and forgot where you got to. Well, no, I yeah. So Jacobs is big at this point, and so I, I need to kind of walk my way through all of the changes. Um, but we also need to talk about them offline, and then. The other one was the XC, elevated XC thing, which I just had a couple questions about that we need to go finish. So the elevated XC code looks pretty good. I'm still a little worried about the update code being some of the things there that we need to go double check on, but we're working through it. So um, yeah, so we need to go discuss those things at some point. All right. I just figured out that there's a feature in Link called polling. Um, Look at I, that. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. So. It replaced your presentation. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That wasn't exactly what I wanted. Uh, how about that? Results are shown to everyone. So now you guys can see? Yep. All right. Um, all right. Cool. So we have four responses. We have four people. Oh, can I vote? Oh, I can vote. I can too, yeah. Yeah, right, there we go. Is that going to get us all six people that are currently on the call? Um, all right, anyway, <clears throat> sounds good. So now if I close the poll, does it go back to my pre presenting? No, it doesn't. No, it's showing up as disabled. Oh, that's too bad. I'll have to remember that in the future. Um, so there's this big black part in the video, I suppose, in the future. All right, I guess that brings us to the end. Anything else? We're about five minutes over. Um, 
Anything else? What happens to the new mailing list? So I have a mail from Eric that I got while I was sick about some things that they've done, and I'm. it, it was a really long email with lots of configuration stuff and really strange, some really strange parts like the mailing address won't be Wix devs at wixtoolset.org. It'll be something else, which I'm like not terribly excited about. So uh, I think I have to go follow up with it. So the answer is it's on my backlog of stuff from when I was sick, along with about six other work items, unfortunately. I decided to do pull requests last night instead of stuff like that. Good, good trade? I think so. <laughs> I think Sean would think so. I think I got most of his pull requests done. So I felt bad about them being out there for so long. Um, all right. Anything else? No, no. Going, going, gone. All right, so we got some work to get done here in 3-9 time frame because the door's closing fast. Um, we'll go from there. And other than that, I, I look forward to more people jumping in 4. I keep waiting for people to move that direction, but we'll see. Um, uh, you won't be so lonely. I know, it's so quiet over here. Um... All right, well, I guess that's all I got. So until next week, you guys have a good time. Yes, yes, Bob? Good? Sounds good to me. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.